Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. We've got a not-so-fender Friday today with glary guitars. But before we unbox this thing, I want to talk about how I really feel about glary because there's been a lot of people sending me a link to a certain video and some other YouTubers talking smack about Glary guitars lately, and I feel you guys deserve to know the truth. Glary is an instrument company for very bottom budget guitars. I've reviewed quite a few of these. In fact, I have a little list right here. The ST3 was the first Stratocaster style that I did a review on. That was a fantastic guitar. It exceeded all my expectations of what a $60 guitar should play and feel like. The 170 was that Ibanez kind of style. I still own it. That's the one I used for the, <laughs> the drop test. I'm really sad that this thing broke. I do plan to fix it one day because, you know, I just kind of feel bad for it. No guitar deserves to die like that. It's still falling apart. But I hate to say it that this guitar just wasn't very good it did not really pass what I would consider, you know, playable straight out of the box. The nut was just a little bit too high. But I like the body design, so overall, just a little bit of setup work and I could suggest that one. The Burning Fire model, it just wasn't my body style. The guitar still played and sounded okay for the budget point, so if you dig guitars that look like this, yeah, you'll be fine. The GP Bass. It's basically the Glary P bass. I still also own this one. And honestly, I really can't find any faults with this thing. I mean, maybe you could say the action is a bit high, but I mean, you can definitely adjust that a little bit. But, you know, I think these are what, 70 bucks, something like that. The neck is straight. The fretwork was passable. Obviously, if you're striving for perfection, you can always do a level and recrown job on these guys. They're not going to be perfect. The mini glary guitar, I just can't suggest any mini guitar. I actually did own that one until about two weeks ago. My nephew came over and asked if he could have it. So I was like, okay, I guess you can take that one home. I was gonna give you a better guitar here in a couple of months, but then the glary ukuleles. These things have been so much fun. I gave one of them away as a gift. My kids play with the other ones, but I still enjoy fiddling around on this thing. I never played ukulele until I got one of these, so that was fun. It's kind of like how I'm having fun with that uh, melodica we did a giveaway on. And then the GT602, that thing was just utter trash. <laughs> I cannot suggest glary acoustic instruments. Sure did it play, yeah, but there were a bunch of flaws on the ones that I had. So things to keep in mind if you are a reviewer of Clary guitars, because let's face it, these guys just send a guitar to anybody now anymore. And that's kind of why I don't do so many of them, because it's like, well, I, I thought we had something special, Clary, here, but I, I know you're cheating with all these other YouTubers. <laughs> Communication is key. The, these guys' first language, it's not English, and they're in a completely different time zone. But that's how I feel about Clary. If you need a dirt cheap guitar, if you've got somebody just starting out on a guitar, are they okay? Yes. Now you're going to get the people to say no, they're not because it'll actually make it harder for them to play. Well, it, it kind of depends which one you get because Glary, unfortunately, you know, having had so many of their guitars, quality control can vary heavily. Like two of the Ukes were really good. One was spectacular, but the other two were very bad. So sometimes it's luck of the draw, but if you buy these from Glary's website, you know, directly from them, not the cheaper ones from eBay or other Chinese sellers, they do give you a money back guarantee. So you always have that going for you. And let's face it, they're cheap. So if you have $300 to invest in your child that wants to learn or $300 to invest in yourself, definitely do it. A $300 guitar is going to be much better than this Glary one. But if you don't have the money, these are very good for what they do offer. So let's go ahead and check out this new one called the GTL. Now, I'm actually kind of proud of this and at the same time kind of ashamed at it because I view myself as kind of like an advisor for Glary at this point because, you know, they produce some decent guitars for the money. I thought I would make a suggestion to them. If you're going to rip off the Stratocaster, why don't you rip off the Telecaster? 
And they said that they had done these once before, but they didn't sell well. And that just didn't make any sense to me because Telecasters, in my opinion, I think they're pretty cool and Les Paul guys like them a lot. Ooh, something happened with this string and shipping. But anyways, here, I told them they should make the Telecaster and try it again because I would be interested in reviewing that body style. So they did. You can now find Glary brand Telecasters. <laughs> I'm sorry, Fender. So first impressions here. Something has happened to my top E string. It appears the ball end of the string has come undone. And I find that very often on Chinese branded strings because I buy packs of them just to, you know, get by on the E strings. But it doesn't appear that the uh, heel was damaged or anything. So I think we're good there. This feels very similar to all the other Glary branded instruments. They have that satin feeling neck. So it's kind of feels unfinished, but there's a light finish on it. Ooh, maybe this one did get damaged in shipping. Okay, yeah, it must have gotten dropped and it kind of chipped the finish. So if I were a purchaser of this guitar, I would probably hit up Glary and say, hey, you want to send me a replacement one? Because this one has clearly been damaged in shipping and they would say, yep, no problem. If you buy it from Glary's website anyways. So looks like we get a strap with a pick. We get a lead, which is kind of interesting that they provide this when this isn't one of the ones that come with an amp. I don't suggest going for the amps anyways. They don't sound too good unless you just need something and you get your wang. What? <laughs> okay, guys, what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> it seems that they're new with this whole Telecaster thing because they're just giving it the same thing that the uh, Stratocasters have. Note to Glary, you don't need a wang bar on a Telecaster. But let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench and I'll tell you a little bit more about this new model by Glary. You can find these on glarymusic.com. There's a channel supporting link in the description and they're $79.99. So one of the more expensive offerings from Glary, but you do have some interesting finish options. I chose blue because yeah, you don't see too many blue Telecasters, but there's the classic tobacco sunburst sunset. There's yellow, which is just kind of, you know, the vintage natural and black. If you just like your straight black telly. Also, if you're a left-handed player, Glary is no longer leaving you out. You can get the burning fire model as well as the GP base. Why they decided to do that body style instead of the telly and strat, I'll never know. But hey, send Glary a message. Tell them what you guys want. Alrighty, let's go ahead and take a look here. Now, first off, if you think this looks absolutely terrible, all this is is a little plastic film. You can easily remove it. In fact, let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so what had actually happened there is they accidentally put two protective coatings on it. So that's why that outer layer looked kind of goofy. But here's what it looks like without it. The only thing uh, quality control wise here is you can see it's pretty rough looking right here. Obviously, they're not going to spend a bunch of time manufacturing these pick cards perfectly. So you kind of get what you pay for in this case. And you can see the fretboard extends off the edge of the neck. And I think that kind of roughed the pick guard up a little bit, too, because it does rest right under there. The neck pickup got coated too. It was so tough to get off, I actually had to take it out of the pick guard just to get it off. So uh, keep in mind that might be a pain in the butt. But looking at the pickup itself, it looks very similar to the other Glary brand pickups and other guitars that you would find that are made in China. But here's something really cool. Look at this route. Normally on a Telecaster, it would look like this. You just have enough for that single coil and then sometimes you'll have a space or a line right there. But this one is actually routed so you could, if you wanted to, modify your pick guard and put a humbucker in it. How cool is that? You can almost get away with just taking the pick guard off and screwing this in, but I think you'd need some extra wood and tabs. If... Now bridge pickup cavity, no such luck there. You're going to be stuck with the telly style single coil unless you do some major modifications to the body. But this one is mounted just like a traditional Telecaster. You've got your ashtray plate here with no cover and it just bolts onto the body by four screws right here. And then the strings go in here so it's not a string through style. That might be an interesting variant that they offer in the future though, but you have your saddles here. Within the circuit, the bridge pickup is about six and a half K ohms. The neck position is 5.78 and middle for fun, about three. 
Now, as far as your control cavity goes, you have your standard, you know, pilgrim hat topper right here. So you select your neck, middle, and bridge pickup positions, as well as a master volume and master tone. Now, here's another one of those things that shows you this is a rush job. What is wrong here? One, two. It looks like somebody accidentally installed this a little bit crooked at first, and then they fixed it. But since it's covered over by that, and hey, you're not at a price point where you can just throw this body away because of it, they just let it go. That's just your standard cheapy little pots with a uh, printed circuit board for your toggle switch. Looking over the rest of the body here, so far I'm impressed with this one. It kind of reminds me of that first Stratocaster. Sure, there's a few, you know, minor issues with it. I mean, we had a little bit of shipping damage right here, but I notice it looks like they sanded the guitar just a hair bit too much right here because you can see where it kind of dips down with the finish and you can actually feel that. I mean, at 70 bucks, do I care? Eh, not really. But that's really the only area that I see that would be like a blemish on the body. And the Glary website says they are a basswood body with a maple neck and a maple fretboard. Now they do these actual fretboard style joined onto the neck because you have a truss rod set in like this. And the only thing I did to this is I used a little bit of steel wool to polish the frets up because let's face it, these things get stored in warehouses for months and years at a time. Now being a fairly newer guitar, but the frets, they just looked kind of rusted and now they're looking good. And I just wiped it down with a little bit of water since we're dealing with a maple fretboard. Typical glary finish here though, you can feel some very light dots within the finish. I think it's just because they work in a fairly dirty environment, so the wood isn't 100% cleaned off when they finish them. So you can kind of see those dots, what I'm talking about there. But, you know, in my experience with these things, it doesn't really affect playability, but it kind of shows you how they cut costs here. Another thing that was kind of glaring to my eyes was looking at this nut. I was confused. Did they inlay it crooked? No, they must have not done this all the way. You see how this is sloped at an angle instead of being straight across? It's just kind of an optical illusion there. As far as the face of the headstock goes, the only thing I ever suggest doing to these once you get one is tighten the tuners. All you need is this little wrench, you put it on there, and you tighten it. Because usually they're fairly loose and that'll help your tuning stability a little bit. And put new strings on them. These are just cheap strings. They're not meant to be fantastic, they'll go out of tune on you, but a proper set of strings, properly wound, will do you wonders. Another thing that helps is to rewind the strings that they give you. I like to demo these with the stock strings so people know what to expect. And you can see, once I wind them, I do it the way the Joe Bonamassa Tech does. See all the extra string I'm taking out of here? That's gonna help increase tuning stability here. I'm gonna go ahead and put one of them good old cheap E strings on here too. I get a 1.64 inch nut width, which increases to 2.03 at the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.92, and it gets smaller at the 12th fret, 0.91. I'm curious now, because Glary always has these giant baseball bat necks. This one's still fat, but it doesn't quite feel as big as those other ones, so they're still giving you chunky baseball bat necks, so that's not always the best for like a little kid beginner, but, but if you're an older guy and you got big hands, that might become an asset for you. They advertise these as 25 and a half inch scale lengths, and fortunately, they're two eighths of an inch off from that though, but they're close. The intonation, it's definitely sharp past the 12th fret. I mean, you could wang jangle all this stuff and maybe set it up a little bit better. The only thing I did though is I lowered the action a little bit because I thought from the factory it was just a little bit uncomfortable, but now it's definitely super comfortable to play. Moving on to the back, nothing too special here because you all have the top routed stuff, so it's just a bolt-on neck. You've got an output jack on the side. I will say this is a poor quality. It keeps cutting in and out on me, but it usually functions good enough to play at home. You got a strap button at the bottom as well as on the top. Beefy maple neck here. I actually want to wipe this down. It it just feels a little bit dirty yet, and most of these glary guitars do. They always have like a black film over them. As with most Galeri instruments, they're pretty light. You've got five pounds, 10 and a half ounces there. A very light body with, with kind of a heavier feeling neck, but, but it feels like it's still gonna balance well. So let's go ahead and plug this in and see how it sounds through my Mesa Boogie Mark 525. <laughs>
So now that we know all about the new Glary Tally style guitars, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Well, I've got a list of pros and a list of cons. The first con is the bad output jack does get annoying. Pretty easy upgrade if you know how to do wiring, otherwise it's gonna cost you almost as much as the guitar to get somebody to swap out your output jack. It was unfortunate that this one received some shipping damage. I just did a light lacquer touch-up pen right there, so you can't really tell that anymore. I missed a spot on the headstock where it also kind of got dinged. And it's kind of hard to see, but there is a very small fracture check line by the neck. But honestly, none of it affected this guitar at all, so I just let it slide. But had I had purchased this, I probably would have asked for a replacement. That's not really Glary's fault though. But if you're buying one of these, definitely get a personalized setup because the action was a little bit higher than I had liked, so I lowered it, I polished the frets up, and kind of dialed it in the best that I could, and I was happy with the way it played. The scale length not being exactly right with the intonation being sharp, yeah, it's something to be aware of. And you really do need to put better strings on this thing. However, on the other side of things, this thing plays really well for a $70 guitar. They always kind of exceed my expectations as far as that goes. Sure, there's other parts you could upgrade to make it better, but it plays well, it feels good, and it stays in tune once you stretch those strings in anyways. And let's face it, it looks kind of cool. I mean, how many other blue Telecasters are out there? Not that many. Tonality-wise, I didn't really like the clean tones out of this one. The pickups just seemed a little bit quiet, didn't have a lot of character, but once you put a little bit of overdrive on these things, that's when, you know, the cheap strat, cheap telly sound starts to come to life in my opinion. So I enjoyed playing this guitar with a little bit of overdrive. So is this a perfect guitar for $70? No but I sure hope you weren't expecting one for that price. If you can't afford anything over these, you'll definitely be happy with them. But if you do have a higher budget, there's definitely better guitars out there. So I hope this gives you an in-depth look at this guitar so you can make a decision on your own, and I will leave a channel supporting link in the description. All right, thank you Troglodytes for tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.